Good afternoon, and welcome to My World Science, where we explore how science synergizes with different elements in our lives. Knowledge is power, and we hope to inspire you to use scientific knowledge to make your life and the world around you a better place. Today, we have a very special guest who can help improve both your quality of life and your longevity through diet. I'm Noah Kittle, and welcome to My World Science. Countless scientific studies have demonstrated what you eat has a direct impact on your body, mind, and soul. We all struggle with food choices, often due to our busy lifestyle and the temptation that surrounds us. Do we eat what's easily available or take the time to prepare a healthy meal? Here to help us on our journey to wellness, we welcome registered dietitian nutritionist Sarah Merkin, RD, CPT, celebrity wellness expert, owner of the Private Practice Kitchen Coach, and author of the book, Fill Your Plate, Lose the Weight. Please Thank join you, me in welcoming Sarah Merkin. Thank, Thank you, you for Noah. joining us today. <laughs> Thank you. I'm excited that you could take time out of your busy schedule to be here. I'm excited to be here. Yes. And you have helped so many people improve their quality of life and just their health in general. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to ask, what made you start becoming a nutritionist? I was always interested in nutrition and health. I was passionate about nutrition. Um, but actually, when I was your age, when I was in high school, all of my friends were dieting, trying different diets. Oh, yeah. And so I did. <laughs> and I saw that it really, it backfired. We would wow. over-exercise, like run 10 miles a day, Ooh. and eat sugar-free jello. <laughs> oh. And it would actually backfire. Um, the weight would plateau. Um, it wasn't an effective way to lose weight, and I didn't understand it. So I started really researching everything, yeah. trying to understand the human metabolism, and um, why it is when you over-exercise and under-eat, your metabolism actually slows down. So for me, I really wanted to completely understand how metabolism worked, how the human body worked, and I wanted to help others. Yes, and it, it is a finicky science that still needs to be figured out. And there's a lot of fad yeah. diets out there of that range in basically every kind of food. Um, and you support the FODMAP diet. What is that? So the low FODMAP diet, I only recommend to people with digestive issues. Okay. So it, um, it eliminates fermentable carbohydrate, which can cause digestive symptoms in some people. And those are typically people that have SIBO, which this might sound confusing, but it's basically bacterial overgrowth. Okay. Um, okay. And a lot of people have and don't even know it. I mean, people come into my office sometimes and tell me their symptoms, they're having bloating all the time. They're really coming in for weight loss. And then I ask more questions and I can tell they have SIBO. And they actually, I have one woman recently that, that came in and she went to her doctor and she was tested and she actually had it. <laughs> um, she started the low FODMAP diet and she felt amazing. Wow. She, actually, the weight fell off she just, and she felt terrific. What, what is actually that test that they went to go see? It's, a, to know? it's a breath test for the bacteria overgrowth. Interesting, a breath test for your internal microbiome. That's really cool. Yeah, it's a three-hour breath test. And I kind of like how um, the bloating is a result of too much bacteria in your internal organs or inside your small in intestine. Your, yep. Yeah, because... The FODMAP diet is, the low FODMAP diet, is eliminating carbohydrates that your body cannot digest. And so instead, the bacteria in your, bio, in your biome would digest it instead, and they would produce gases. Correct. And that would cause the bloating. And other symptoms. So a lot of the times, people with, that are diagnosed with IBS, mm -hmm. you know, they go to the doctor, they have stomach problems, right. the doctors say IBS. And, I mean, still... To this day, most of the doctors still say that, but over 80% of the people that have been diagnosed with IBS actually have SIBO. Wow. I guess we need to fix that up. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so the low FODMAP diet, I have uh, pictures here that you, that you brought. Ah, yes, of course. Everyone talking about how right. bloating isn't normal and you should get it checked out. Exactly. And some of us can actually experience bloating for so much of our lives that we don't even know it as bloating. Mm -hmm. We just push it off because we're so used to feeling it. And right. so I guess it's really important to be in tune of your body and really check and figure out what's going on. And some people suffer in silence because they're embarrassed to talk about the yeah, symptoms. Yeah, of course. And that, that kind of mentality has to also just change yeah. in society. Anyway, so the, the low FODMAP diet involves certain, of all kinds of foods that are low in these FODMAP 
right. carbohydrates. And here's a picture of the nuts, right, that you can and cannot eat. Right. So most of them are fine. It's just the pistachios and cashews pistachios you really cashews. have to watch okay. out for. And I'm seeing these, these numbers next to mm -hmm. all the names in the nuts. What is so that? That's the max that you should be eating okay. to not experience symptoms. Yes, yeah, so there's only 10 almonds. Yeah, individual nuts. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, and coconut I see is on here. I guess coconut's a nut. Yeah, I've, never, I've never thought about it. Oh, yeah. Coconut um, is just needs to be eaten in moderation, half a cup. Okay, and even coconut water, only 100? No, no coconut water. Okay, yeah. Uh, next, yes, here are the um, vegetables. These are free. Oh, sorry. <laughs> These are foods that you can eat as much as you oh, want. Oh, sorry, yeah, I misinterpreted yeah. it. They're low fold Eat them as many times as you want. Right. So that's nice. Yeah, so strawberries are unlimited. All your protein foods um, pretty much are unlimited except for, I'd say, soft tofu. Okay, soft tofu. But all the uh, animal products. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah, because they don't really have a lot of carbohydrates, do right. they? Um, it's just milk. Some dairy. Yeah, it's just some dairy. Lactose free milk. Lactose free mm -hmm. milk because some people need to be lactose free in order to not get bloating. Well, the lactose is one of the FODMAPs. That too, yes. Um, but cheese is fine, except for soft cheeses, very soft cheeses. Except for soft cheeses. What are soft cheeses? So like ricotta and cottage cheese, you'd have to watch the portion. Okay. Uh, mozzarella? Mozzarella's fine. Oh, okay. So All if right. you look on the food label when you're um, choosing a cheese, if it says zero sugars and has no lactose. Most oh. people don't realize that. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so you can eat the cheeses with zero sugars, which is zero most sugar. of them. I see you have red, red cap uh, sayasim on there. That's, that's peppers, right? That's just spicy. Yeah. That's spicy food. So, so not everyone can tolerate that. If someone has like heartburn, oh, of course. they might yeah. have a problem with that. And too many digestive problems. Right. <laughs> All right. Here are just fruits. Um, let's see. We got some kiwis. Wow, I didn't know kiwis could be green and gold. Kiwis are great. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Star fruit. I've never seen a star fruit. They're delicious. I guess I I'd recommend try trying them. Yeah. Let's really see. great. So bananas are the difficult one, I mm -hmm. guess. Yeah, people get really confused about the bananas because they have to be extra firm, actually a little green. This should be a little green. bit more green. Uh, yes, yeah. um, so the bananas have to be green. They should be a little green little. to be low foam up. If they're too ripe, then they're going to be high. Okay, and okay. yeah, that definitely, I just tell people not to have the bananas okay, <laughs> if okay. they can yeah. avoid them. Right, because once you buy a green one, it's like, uh-oh, it's yellow now. Yeah. So <laughs> we got durians on there. Um, I mean, I've never experience a durian. I haven't either. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's see. Passion fruit. Pineapple. Pineapple. What about... Um, so one thing I believe that you've told me before is how you can have low format fruits, but you shouldn't be having any kind of fruit juices. Right. Because it's concentrated yeah. sugar. Yeah. yeah there's no, there's no I mean, a fiber. fourth of a cup is okay for some fruit juices, Okay. but that's it. Right. Um, and here are flavors. And there are some flavors that we can and cannot eat as well, which can be disappointing at times, but luckily there's plenty that we can eat. Exactly. So, so this is so important yeah. for people following the diet so that they do know that there are different things they can use to flavor their fruits, Okay. besides garlic and onion. And infused oil, what is, isn't garlic infused oil okay? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. So you can even make that at home, yeah. as long as you don't use any water, but just by cooking garlic and oil and then draining it so you don't have any of the garlic left. And the same thing okay. with onions. So the process of making an infused oil is, does it matter what kind of oil should they use? It doesn't matter, but I'd recommend avocado oil or um, extra virgin olive oil. All right, and then you put the onion or garlic in there. And cook and you it. cook it in like in a pan, in a pot? Yeah, in a pan. And then you drain the oil. Mm -hmm. And you, if you have just the oil, that's yeah. good. That's good. Okay. That's actually okay. fine. That's how you do it. As long as there's no water involved. Cumin, cinnamon, cloves. Uh, the great mint. one is green onion. Green onion, oh yes. It adds a lot of flavor, yeah. Ginger, ginger's a good one. Chives are great, yeah, ginger's terrific. We got soy sauce, we got mm -hmm. tomato sauce. Tomato uh, sauce as long as it's low FODMAP. As long as it's low FODMAP Because most sauce. of the time tomato sauce has onion and garlic. You're right, yeah, they do. And barbecue sauce probably has uh, specifics it, as well. Yeah, not more than two tablespoons. Okay. Uh, vinegar, mustard. Right, mm -hmm. yeah, because mustard doesn't actually have sugar in it. Right. And I, and I like that. Uh, let's see, anchovies, capers, I'm pronouncing mm -hmm. it right. Yep. Limes, and oranges and lemons again. And olives, that's cool. Yeah, I actually just ordered the anchovy paste um, to try a new Caesar dressing. Oh. That's low format for my new book. Okay, that's real. Oh yeah, your new book. Um, 
I, I have that here. So that's the, the okay. Right. That's I dropped it. That's the most recent book. As the most recent one, you have multiple. Um, that's one that came out in April. In April. And then I have one coming out in May 2020, and that's on oh, the low right. FODMAP diet. Yeah, that's the one you're working on now. Yeah, cool. it's a guidebook. So I'm trying the recipes, and mm -hmm. yeah, it's a fun process. Are there any uh, really unique stories you have of certain patients that you've seen? You told them to eat a certain diet, and they did that, and then they there are tons all the time. Tons all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so recently a man came in who was diagnosed with SIBO, with um, bacteria overgrowth, and I taught him about the low FODMAP diet. He followed it very strictly. His symptoms went away, like wow. really pretty quickly, but after two or three weeks. Um, and then we went through the reintroduction phase. That's six weeks. He was retested again. It's gone. Wow. If, if the SIBO was gone, does that mean he could go off of the low FODMAP yep. diet? Wow, okay. Yeah. So it actually kind of works. It works like a cure then for some people. For some people. Most some people, people, there's usually like one group they can't tolerate. Okay. But it's best to eliminate everything until you're symptom free. Of course, the hardest part of this diet is, well, sticking to it because you can't, you basically cannot have anything that's high food map. When you you're have. following it very strictly in the beginning, it's a good idea to, yeah. Right, yeah. And that can be kind of difficult. So where should people go in grocery stores to actually get these ingredients that they would need? They can find them in all the aisles. Oh, okay. Yeah, they stay away from the cookie like, aisle. Pay attention. <laughs> they have to just have to pay attention to the, to the, the ingredients. The food labels, yeah. The ingredients. Or they can go shopping with their dietitian. Does there, happen to, <laughs> does there happen to be a specific store that basically does like mostly low FODMAP? Or? There, no. no, you can okay. order. There are um, places online ah, okay. where you can order only low FODMAP, like the FODI and FODMAPR. Mm -hmm. um, but it's Sprouts. Sprouts has a lot of ah, low Sprouts. FODMAP products. Okay. They carry FODI. Yeah, a lot. It's the only one that I've seen. I mean, that has the FODI products, the FODMAPR. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Yeah. Okay, let's see. I think the next one is just, yeah, it's just simplified. Um, oh, yeah, these are some high FODMAP yes, examples. Yes, to avoid entirely. Like onion and garlic, we've mentioned. Mm -hmm. Cauliflower's on there. Yeah, cauliflower. Button mushrooms. Not even a, a bite. <laughs> and apples, interestingly. Yeah, apples are really high. They're I guess it makes sense because they are very sweet. Could, they, could apples be high because we've bred them to be high in sugar? Because I know that like some apples are sweeter than others. Mm. They're all high. They're all high? All okay. very high. I think the maximum amount is one tablespoon. That can be tolerated. Okay. Um, let's see. We also, broccoli, green beans, beetroot, wheat, and oats are in the watch portion size Exactly. List. So three-fourths of a cup of broccoli is fine. Green beans, I believe, is 12 green beans. And then we got beetroot, wheat, oats. Now, wheat... Wheat is a hard one probably to cut out because it's everywhere. Gluten, right? Right. Gluten is part of high FODMAP, so... And so many people in general are intolerant to gluten. Oh, okay. So it's a good one to really cut out in the beginning, I think. Yeah. And oats don't have gluten, but we still have to watch out? Well, oats, yeah, I would still watch out. And they, sometimes they do have a little bit of gluten. Ah, uh, okay. But no, most people can't tolerate large portions of the oats. Yeah, yeah. And of course, eat freely. We got carrots. Um, yeah. What is that, a canned pumpkin? Yep. What is a Kent pumpkin? <laughs> it's a green pumpkin. A green pumpkin? Okay. Oh, potatoes, <laughs> rice. Potatoes, yeah. Of course, meat, and again, like You don't want to overdo it with the potatoes and rice. Yeah, of course, because rice is still grain. Yeah. And especially white rice. It's like, and it triggers inflammation. It's, yeah, you don't want to do well. too many carbs. Wow. But yeah. And I think what's next is actually a video. I'm Sarah. I'm a registered dietitian in private practice. I've actually been practicing since 1997. As a registered dietitian, I'm 43 years old, and I'm more fit than I've ever been in my life. So the reason for this is because I wanted to learn about the human metabolism, how it worked. I was always passionate about nutrition. I wanted to understand why is it that when people restrict their calories and over-exercise, they don't lose weight. But when you're eating, paying attention to your hunger signals, exercising in moderation, paying attention to your body, that's when you see results. I love what I do. I love working with all of my clients because I make them healthy, I make them strong, I make them fit, I make them reach their goals long term so they establish permanent lifestyle change. Thank you for the video. Oh, of course. So how, when someone goes to meet a nutritionist, how should they prepare for it to make the best of the appointment? Okay. Well, first they have to be ready to make changes. They can't okay. expect 
uh, the dietitian to make changes for them. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, and they can't expect it to happen overnight. Okay, so they have to have patience. They have to be ready for a little bit of a journey. Mm -hmm. um, but it's important for them to come in with specific goals and um, make everything very clear with their dietitian to keep food records so the dietitian can see exactly what they're eating. So they need okay. to be very detailed. That's so helpful. Um, and then never lie to your dietitian. <laughs> yeah, that, that's kind of that important. backfires. <laughs> if you if you like lie at all, it basically messes up. It could mess up your entire diet scheme. It's right? just no point in seeing a dietitian if you're going to lie about what you're eating. Yes. Right. <laughs> um, we had a gastroenterologist on the show before, and I guess there's certainly similarities between the two because if you, especially if you're focusing on how uh, irritable syndromes in your intestines healthy can digestion be improved, right? Yeah. Um, do you guys work together at all? Yes. Yeah, you do? Yeah, we refer patients to refer each other. Refer patients to each other? That's mm -hmm. cool. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today at Mori World Science. If you'd like to see more of our content, please follow us on Twitter or Instagram, at MyWorldScience. And until next time, think inquisitively. Thank you for joining us today, Sarah Merkin. Thank you so much for having me, Noah. Yes. It was really interesting to talk about nutrition and how it is really the best medicine. Yep. I have a pineapple. And I'm going to cut it right after we leave. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs>